Jesus, I ask that you just come into this place and bless each of us. And you give us your message of your work and your story. For Dean, Cindy, and I took advantage of every opportunity to celebrate milestones over the last 40 years. Our appreciation for life and family were reasons enough to celebrate. As you saw in the slideshow prior to the service, service, we had fun celebrating. But today is our last and most joyous celebration for our dad. Since January last year, our dad has fought for complete recovery after his bout with colitis that ended him up in the hospital. He has been in a Wahoo care facility in Evergreen Care Home down the street from his home. And the last nine months at home with amazing caregiving from Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. It was six months in Oahu care when we felt pretty helpless when Dad had one thing after another to overcome to be able to get stronger. It was also a time when many, many prayers were lifted to our Heavenly Father and our Earthly Father. Several of you stopped by at Oahu care with visits, prayers, and songs. And you know how moved our Dad was. It was not just the love you expressed to Him. But surely it was the presence of the Lord with him through you. And you came caroling to their home. Our dad with our mom has been in this place many, many times over the last five decades for Easter and Christmas and concerts. He and mom even have friends here in this church. So they have heard the salvation story of Jesus dying for all our sins. When we almost lost our mom to cancer in 2008, Dad saw with his own eyes the miracle of healing overnight. There is no mistaking when God moves. On Mother's Day this year, we were at Queen's Hospital with Dad, and Dad said, and we had just finished praying, getting ready to leave, and Dad said, Amen. It had to be the Spirit leading. We asked him, Dad, who is your God? He answered, Jesus. Dad, are there any other gods? Dad replied, no more. There was great rejoicing in that room that night. Our mom also confessed her faith in Jesus. After the tears of joy were, were wiped away and we all calmed down, Dean said, we can go to church, Dad. But Dad said, no need to go to church. He's in my heart. We could not have asked for a stronger profession of his faith in Jesus that night. Having our mom and dad receive Jesus into their hearts was always one of our greatest desires that would bring us our greatest joy. But mom and dad grew up Buddhist and we didn't know how God would work to change their hearts. God is faithful. Years and years of prayers for our parents from so many of you who were answered that night. You just never know how the Spirit is moving in someone's life as they sit in this place at occasional times or as you talk to them or sing to them or pray for them. May it encourage you to never give up, but always leave it to the Lord. We miss our dad so much. He was the one that set the example of loving our mom and giving up sacrificial love to his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. We are happy, we are family because of him. It's sad to see him go, but there's nothing like the confident joy we all have that we know that our dad is with Jesus now, living forever in heaven. We will see him again. This is a day truly to celebrate. In trying to think of uh, what I should share about my dad, I thought, uh, Maybe I, would, I should share 
what my dad would want to share with you today. What my dad would want you to hear and what my dad would want to you to know about what he's experiencing now. And actually, my dad is here. First of all, my dad would want to thank all of you for your presence here today to celebrate his life. He thanks all of you for your love for him. He thanks all of you for loving our family. He, he knows how you know you just could have been home taking a nap, taking, watching the football game, or you know the kind of stuff that he would be doing, or what you know doing yard work. But he looks up here and he says thank you. Well, as you know, and you heard through, through uh, Reed and Sean Gale, that Dad was, was such a loving, caring husband, a father, grandfather, and friend. He loved Mom and all of us so dearly, and he was always thankful for the family that he had. He always would tell us that it was so important to love each other, that we all always had to try to get along with each other. Getting along with each other was so important to him. He would tell me, tell me, Dean, you, you think you're wise, but you know, your sisters are wiser than you. <laughs> so, so you need to listen to them. <laughs> so I always try to listen to my sisters and to teachers. So my dad would say, it's so important to love your wife, to love your family, and to get along with each other. And his family was the most important to him. He, was all, he would also say, that it's not enough. You would say to take your grandchildren to the mainland, to treat them to Disneyland, to treat them to Knott's Berry Farm. You would say to make sure that you spoil your favorite son. <laughs> you would say, give your favorite son his own bedroom and let the daughters share a closet. <laughs> but he would also say, and all these things are great, that is not enough. He enjoyed, he would say, enjoy watching UH football, although you know, nowadays it's kind of painful to do that. <laughs> so he would, he would hope that the Giants could beat the Dodgers. He would say to be able to enjoy golfing once or twice a week, to cheer on Phil Mickelson, and to enjoy other kinds of UH sports. And all these things were enjoyable to him, and he just, he was important, and he loved doing this. But he, he would say that today, he would say today that all these things are not enough. My dad feels really good knowing that he loved and he did all he could for the family. But I think he feels best knowing that Jesus did everything for him. Giving him hope, giving him joy, and giving him eternal life. He would say to us today, having life in Christ is more than enough. One evening as I was praying for my dad, I asked him, So dad, what do you want me to tell Jesus? My dad responded saying, Nothing. He knows what's in my heart. It's never too late to be faithful. And these wonderful words that, that he spoke were so confirming and reassuring to me of what was in my dad's heart. And so I think my dad would want you to know that it's never too late to be faithful, to be obedient, and to seek Jesus Christ. But I think he would also say that you better not wait too long because good chance you're not going to live to 92 years old. <laughs> In James chapter 4, verses 14 to 15, James writes, How do you know what your life will be tomorrow? Your life is like a vapor that appears for just a short time and then quickly vanishes away. Our earthly lives are so short and we just don't know when it's going to end. But our lives with Christ will last forever. My dad's 92 years here on earth may seem long, but it's so short compared to the forever years that we will have in heaven. In the last 18 months, my dad did not enjoy being able to do the things he had done the earlier part of his life. 
He was hurting that his dog, Chibi, that was his second best friend, had passed on. And he wasn't happy that he needed help walking, that he helped, needed help going to the restroom, and often, oftentimes he needed help eating. He no longer could do things in his own strength. But now my dad would say that going through the suffering, losing all the strength, not being able to do what he wanted to do wasn't fun. In fact, it was painful. But oftentimes, God allows us to go through the suffering so that we can get our attention. That God can use it for His good and for our good. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3, it says, And I will give you treasures in heaven, in heaven hidden in the darkness, secret riches. And I will do this so that you may know that I am the Lord, the one who calls you by name. Though it is not the road that my, my dad would have chosen, God allows the darkness and suffering in our lives. But it is in the darkness lots of times that he gives us these treasures and these riches. It was in the darkness that the Holy Spirit softened my dad's heart so that my dad could hear him speaking and telling him that he was loved, that he was chosen, that he was a child of God. It was in the darkness that he used the prayers of many people, that he used people that visited him, someone singing, someone dancing. And he even used people to a Christmas carol and visited him and sang to him. He used all this to show Dad more of Christ. It was in the darkness that God did his amazing work to change my dad's heart. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 to 18, Paul writes, These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. Things that are seen don't last forever, but things that are seen, are not seen, are eternal. That's why we keep our minds on the things that cannot be seen. My dad probably did not see God, what God was doing in his pain, but he would now say that it was all worth going through the weakness and the suffering so that he could really know the love of Christ so that he could receive the eternal glory. In his great pain, he came to know God's great goodness. During the last nine months, um, my dad had lived in caregiver. Johnny, Johnny is somewhere out there. Johnny's here. And Johnny was taking care of my dad 24 hours a day, seven days a week, providing wonderful care for my dad. He cared for my dad, and my dad was his grandfather. My dad, when my dad was in the hospital, he would spend hours in the hospital with him. My dad was so blessed, and we were all so blessed to have Johnny care, Johnny's caring and loving for my dad. And he not only provided care for my dad, but he also provided care for my mom. So when my mom was ill or sick or going through things, he was there to help my mom too. For a few, few weeks ago, Johnny shared with me and said, Dean, you and your sisters, you, you always say how blessed you are to have me as your dad's caregiver. You always praise and thank me. But you don't know what your, that your dad has been an even greater blessing to me. Dad took care of me in so many more ways than I ever did for him. Johnny then shared with me for the first time that he was battling an illness. He had shared about his illness with my dad, not to anyone else. He shared about how my dad became a wonderful friend to him as Johnny was going through his own physical challenge. My dad was a source of strength, a source of comfort. Johnny told, told me that one night my dad told Johnny, Johnny, I'll pray for you. He 
His words brought tears to John. But John said that tears were of joy, knowing that he was loved, knowing that my dad was there. He said that my dad was a gift to him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, Paul writes, God comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. My dad may not have realized it then, but my, my dad now knows that what he was going through in his weakness and suffering, as he endured it with grace, that he was being a blessing and that he was ministering to someone else who was going through his struggles. My dad would say today, we never know that as we go through our suffering and our pain and the hardness of our lives, we never know how God can use us to bring His comfort, His healing, to someone else who's going to their pain. You know, my dad would never, normally not say all these things. He, like we'd say, he didn't say much, but he would just go get to the point. But I can't help but believe that dad right now is in the fullness of joy. And in, in Psalm 1611, it's written, in his presence is fullness of joy. In the presence of our Heavenly Father, my dad has this fullness of joy. And with this fullness of joy, this fullness of excitement that my dad now has, I have to believe that he would want you to know, and he would want us to know, that it was all worth going through the weakness and the suffering so that he could really know the love of Christ. He would want us to know that he is now in perfect body, in perfect health, and with a pure heart. He would like us to know that he is probably now teaching teachers how to shoot pool <laughs> and how to golf. And that he is enjoying being with the many others, others of all of you folks know that who have gone before us and are now experiencing eternal glory. And you would want all of us to the joyful life in Christ and with Christ. So we look forward to that day, to be with Him and to be with Christ. Shall we pray? Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence with us here today. We thank you, Lord, for Dad and for his life, Lord, for his gift of love, for his gift of life, for, for all that he did for us, Lord, for his sacrifice, for always being there for us, Lord. And Lord, even though Dad was weak in the last two years that he had suffered, Lord, those, in those last two years, Lord, there was so much richness in his life. There are so many precious moments, Lord, that only could have come through those tough and trying times, Lord, that we could learn more about that, we could see more of Him, Lord, that, that You just worked in His life, Lord, in the last two days. Like Dad said, it's never too late to be faithful. So we thank You, Lord. We thank You, Lord, that it's never too late to be we thank you, Lord, that you never gave up on Dad. Even when he was 90 years old, Lord, you never gave up on him, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you never give up on any of us, Lord, all of us. You are always there. You are always so faithful, Lord. And so we thank you. Now, Lord, we ask that you continue to pour your comfort, your peace upon all, Lord. Because we know what is so painful. It must be so painful to to lose your best friend and your best friend that you've had for 65 years. So we ask for your grace, for your, 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 just your comfort and your peace upon her and all of us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are our rock. You are our strength. And when we go through these times, like, Lord, you are always there for us. We thank you, Lord, for all these who have come today, for their kindness, for their, for their love for us, for their family, all through these years. We miss Dad so much, Lord, but we have this incredible peace knowing that Dad is in your presence and then we get to spend eternity with him and with you. 
And now, Lord, we praise you. We celebrate Dad's life with you. And so we lift up our voices and we thank you for your mighty works in Dad. And we look forward to the mighty works you, you have prepared for all of us, Lord. All of our lives, Lord, you have prepared for us mighty works. And so we thank you. We lift up our voices and we thank you, Lord. For all these things we do in, we pray in your, your precious name. Amen.